Now, what I've got plugged in here now is, in fact, I haven't got it plugged in yet. I can plug it in. Plugging this radio mic into channel two. And if I fade up channel two, switch tone off, fade up channel two, you can now see the output from my personal mic on both outputs of the mixer, registering on channel one and, and channel two. Um, that's confusing because I'm, I've got input channels and I've got output channels. Let's call the outputs uh, left and right output to avoid any confusion. So the channel two is switched at the moment so that it's outputting on both the A and B or the left and right outputs of the mixer and going to the camera as left and right outputs. So channels one and two have their attenuator and base cut switches actually located on the face of the mixer rather than the underside. It's very important to not have channels that aren't having an input to have them completely faded out at all times. Otherwise they will introduce noise, background noise into your mix. So if you haven't got anything plugged into these channels, have them faded right down all the time. The channels that you are using, you want to have in a, in a reasonable sort of working position. So as you have channel two here with my microphone on it, um, an, an ideal working position is between about 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock on the control fader. You don't want to be working with it down in this sort of area where it's more like an on-off switch or way up at the top end where you've got less control. So in order to match your input levels to this sort of reasonable area of working, that's where the attenuator comes in. You can use the attenuator switch to adjust your source so that you can use the faders in their mid positions. The other important thing on the front of the mixer is this gang switch. It's very important that that is switched to the off or zero position to the left here if you're using mono sources as we are today. If you have it switched into any other configuration, it introduces um, circuits for stereo working that cause a lot of confusion in terms of the metering and so on. So make sure that the gang switch is switched to the off position. The white toggle switch here is the limiter and for normal mono working that needs to be switched to the M position and that then will control peaks so that they don't go over the top and cause distortion. So if I increase the gain on this input here with my microphone you'll see that it doesn't actually go beyond six on the meter. That's because the limiter is holding the, the peak level and ideally when that happens this mixer isn't actually working properly but if it was these LEDs would be lighting up when the limiter was holding the level back and ideally what you want in, a, in a, any given situation is for these LEDs just to flash very occasionally on peaks while you're able to maintain a level between about four five, and five and a half on the meters which is a good level for ordinary speech for the purpose of documentary type material. This switch we, we did um, have a look at before, that switch is the, the tone oscillator on and off. It also provides a slate mic if you switch it to the right. It's a spring-loaded slate mic that you can use, it's built into the mixer and you can use that to um, 
and put an ident onto your soundtrack should you require. This selector switch here selects the source that you're actually listening to on your headphones in terms of whether it's a stereo source or a mono source or individual left and right signals from the mixer itself. For ordinary mono working that needs to be switched to the L plus R position. And this toggle switch here underneath at the right hand side uh, is normally covered with a red has a little red sheath on the toggle to mark it and um, this one's missing but this is quite an important button because it switches between the mixer output on your headphones to the return feed that we have here from the camera so that in return mode you're listening to the output from the camera and you have a safety check that the sound you're mixing is actually getting to the camera. Finally the right hand side of the mixer apart from the battery compartment has this row of switches that switch the output of individual channels to the output of the mixer. So you've got two outputs on the mixer. Uh, in the mid position of these switches, those channels, one, two, three, and four, are output to both the A and the B, or the left and the right outputs of the mixer. If you want to separate individual channels and go into what we call split working, you can switch them to the left, or to the right to separate those two individual outputs on the mixer. So now you'll see that my microphone, on, which is on channel two, this is switched to the right hand side and the output of channel two is now only on the right hand output. One, two, three, four, five. And interestingly, the um, LED on the limiter is now illuminating, whereas it wasn't before. Wonder what happens if I switch that to the other output. The mic should now only be outputting on output one or the left output, and you can see it's working, but the, the LED on that particular channel seems to have failed. It should be illuminating as the limiter works. And that is the journey around the SQN, basically. So lots of, lots of pitfalls, lots of possible switches that might be in the wrong place. Um, that's something to check on the mixer when you first get it out from stores before you start your recording day. Okay.